Well, good morning and welcome to a few minutes of devotional time here at the little studio in Wilkes County, North Carolina. That's Miss Annie over there uh, working the camera and my name's David in case you didn't know and we're really happy that you stopped by for a little bit so we can share the Word of God and some thoughts to get our day started well. I hope and pray that your week was a good one and it was a fulfilling one for you, but even if it wasn't, just know that and keep on believing that God loves you and, and right on through our trials and roughest times, He is with us. And it's by His strength that we can survive those times and enjoy the better things that He has for us. As always, we want to invite you to be with us online and uh, come over this morning at 10 o'clock uh, for our regular Sunday service at Arbor Grove United Methodist Church in Perlier, North Carolina. Pastor Susie's preaching from Revelation 21 and from John 13 this week. So it sounds like an interesting message. It always is. So just stay on the Facebook page of Arbor Grove United Methodist Church this morning at 10 and worship with us if you like. You're always welcome at the Old Arbor. Now, I've often wondered how human beings could have progressed so much in technology We've built some amazing things, and yet we can't seem to govern ourselves very well. It seems like we're either striving, and this is worldwide, that we're either striving with our own government or we're fighting somebody else's all the time. Well, you know, Paul had a lot to say about that, how to get along with our earthly rulers. And here's a passage or two from the book of Titus that he wrote, and we just want to read it. He talks about the rules and the rulers, and he says... In Titus chapter 3, starting at verse 3, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed upon us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. In other words, to the best of our abilities, try to get along within our government as, as much as we can and obey our laws. It doesn't always work out, but Paul said, that Jesus said that it was important to do. It needs to be our mindset to obey our rulers as much as possible, as long as it don't get between us and the Lord. So with that scripture in mind, I want to share a thought with you. I got from listening to a message preached many years ago by Billy Graham. Most of you should know who that is. In that message, Billy was listing all the great political movements that the world has seen. Nation after nation, empire after empire, political ideologies, rulerships of all kinds, how they came about, and how long or how short they actually were. You know, our form of government here in this country is most often referred to as a democratically elected republic with a constitution and hopefully guaranteed rights to each citizen. Now we haven't done it perfectly. I wouldn't begin to tell you that, but I, <clears throat> I personally like representative government, 
But there have been other attempts at ruling that people have come up with. Over the thousands of years of human existence, we've had monarchies, we've had dictatorships. <clears throat> people have lived under philosophical rules and military rules and even theological rules, like the Israelites in Moses' day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And each time, the ruling class thought that they knew what was best for the people, or maybe for themselves. <laughs> But one by one, each of these types of governments would fail, and then they would fall, and then they would be replaced by another one, sometimes by vote, but most often by force. And on the face of it, you'd think that since we've made progress in things like uh, medicine and travel and housing and communication, we should all have made, all should have made great progress in uh, governing ourselves as well. But that's the problem to begin with. We were never made or meant to govern ourselves as human beings. Do you know that? We were made to serve a creator who made us with free will. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? We were made with the mind and the heart of a servant. But because God gave us free will, we chose to rebel against our Creator and instead follow the advice of another rebel, and that was Satan. And that's why all of our governmental endeavors turn out less than perfect. That's why all of our attempts to make our situation better here on earth are flawed sooner or later, the best that we can do. Now, our purpose this morning is not to get us down in the dumps about what we haven't done or can't do or how we've done something wrong, but I do want to take just a minute and examine our so-called progress as humans and human government. To begin with, in medicine, we've developed a lot of stuff in medicine. We've learned how to extend lives with medications. I'm alive right now probably because of the pills I take. Uh, Medical procedures, we've got pretty good at them, and we make ourselves more comfortable with things to control physical pain. But do you know more and more people are becoming addicted and socially dysfunctional as these same drugs are misused to the point that we can't hold down jobs sometimes, we can't manage day-to-day -day bills or thought, we can't manage a business, we, some of us can't keep a roof over our heads, and we can't think beyond the next pill or fix of some of those drugs. Now, another thing, we didn't like walking or riding a horse centuries ago in a wagon all the time, so we developed personal transportation and laws to govern its use. We made cars, and gasoline engines, and airplanes, stuff like that. But you know, deaths just to traffic accidents alone are over 3,000 a day worldwide. Over 3,000 people die on average in the world every day because of traffic accidents. And in the U.S. alone, they say it was over 42,000 last year. 42,000 people. Maybe when we developed all these things, we, we quit thinking about the laws that we developed like the traffic signs. Maybe folks don't read traffic signs anymore. And Think about housing. You'd think that we would have figured out now as human beings how everybody could afford to sleep under a roof by now. Yet in our country alone, the homeless situation seems worse than it's ever been. And the reasons are endless. We can't even get into all of them today, but lack of personal responsibility, the effects of COVID, inflation, drugs, maybe inferior public planning, and sometimes just outright bad weather robs us of a house. But we can't seem to keep roof over our head. A lot of folks can't. How about communication? Not so long ago, we went to see our neighbors if we wanted to tell them something, if they lived too far away just to holler over at them and tell them something. Well, then we developed the telegraph, and then the telephone, and then the teletype, and then the television. And still we weren't satisfied, so we came up with the computer, <laughs> and then the cell phone, and then social media. Boy, 
You know, even the appliances in our homes are getting smart and interconnected now. I do believe the government's going to be able to look in a screen and tell you five states away what you're cooking for supper before long. But you know, with all that communication, we're still discontented with each other. As a matter of fact, I think we're staying mad at each other worse now than we did before we knew what we were actually thinking and put it down on a, a pad or a cell phone. What's the source of that discontent that people have with each other? People say something online we don't like and we'll turn around and say something back and in a few minutes our little world can be at war, whether we're in a car or in a home or maybe between two countries if you get to talking to each other across the water. You know, with all these technological changes, with all the government experiments, including all of our democratic republic, which I still like, by the way, have we really improved our situation much as human beings? I don't think so. Why do we still lie to each other? We was doing that to begin with. Why do we still hate each other? Cain and Abel had their problem and Cain hated Abel for his offering and his acceptance of God's admonition to make a right kind of a sacrifice and he killed him and it's been that way ever since. Why do we still search and hunt and strive for happiness that seems to be as far beyond our grasp as that fruit was from Eve in the garden? Well, I'll tell you why. Not that I'm so smart. Because we're convinced that we can rule ourselves and when we do that we leave God out of the equation. We will not accept as human beings that we are not our own masters. But folks, we were made as servants. Genesis 2 verse 15 says that God took the man who he created and he put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And God even created human companionship for him. Look what was here. A perfect garden. A perfect existence. A man with dominion over his surroundings. A man with a purpose, a job, a creator that called him and called all creation around him a good thing. That loved him. And he was a servant to his God. But because of man's free will, Satan, the devil, that old serpent that the Bible, the way he calls it, he went after Adam and Eve. And because of their decision, and it was a decision, to follow Satan's advice, they ignored the rule of God and they brought death on themselves and the whole human race. And all through history, we've had the same problem because we're created servants. We cannot govern ourselves. Oh, we're pretty smart with our hands, our imaginations, our technologies, but we're not smart enough to outwit the devil. And he becomes our master if and when we shut God out. We were born to serve and we'll wind up serving either God or Satan. There is no middle ground. Do you want to see the effects of Satan? Just look around you and listen and watch where humanity's going, what it thinks, how it's managing itself. But do you want to see the effects of accepting God's offer of grace through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus? Then you look in the face of a believer. See who's concerned for the homeless, regardless of the reason that they're homeless. See who is content to give to charitable relief causes or organizations, or even one-on-one -on -one with a beggar on the side of the road. Look and see who's taking time to pray with somebody in a hospital waiting room, maybe even a stranger. Look and see who's sharing the gospel the words of Jesus and a word of encouragement to somebody who's out of hope, maybe in a struggling family or with a failing job or a wayward child or somebody that's just buried a friend or a relative. See who's comforting them. Be aware that there are people that some of them have very little physical strength or health or wealth, but they're all around you and they are still very strong and they are vital prayer warriors. These believers have existed and continue to exist in every nation, including ours, since the gospel was ever preached. And they know who's really in charge, and they don't need the government to tell them. 
I suppose you can find some good in almost every type of government that man's come up with, but they've all failed sooner or later. Why? Because inevitably sin will show up. And we're a sinful people. And when God's left out, Satan steps in. Don't matter if it's a king or a queen or a president or a senator or a representative uh, or a dictator with a big stick. To leave God out of our day-to-day -day existence is to invite Satan right on into our house. To put God first in our life is to admit our sin, to desire to turn away from it and put our faith in the only way, the only truth, the only chance at eternal life, Jesus Christ. When we change our desire for the world to a desire for his world and ask him to come into our heart, then it won't matter who our current leaders might be. They, like us, they're mortal. And like us, they'll be temporary. Our world will change for the better and change eternally for the better when we realize who the real leader is. Amen. Speaking of leading, you might have sung this old song in church somewhere right here. I, I'm pretty sure most of you have. If you've never heard it, it's a pretty good thought. It goes like this. He leadeth me, oh blessed thought, oh worlds with heaven. Victories won, even death's cold wave. I will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He Let him lead you, folks. You can't go wrong. I hope to see you next week. God bless you. And amen.